What's going on? It's your girl Esther, and you are in tune to EbonyLavon.com, the dopest on the internet. Don't go anywhere. Evelyn and right now today I'm telling with the lady of the hour is Stella. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? Good. Oops. Now I'm excited to be sitting here with her because she has, I think it's gonna be the hit of the summer. Well, Make thank her you. say. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about that and the concept. Oh man, the record, the record was, uh, the record was fun. I, we started recording this album and I think I got like 12, 15 solid tracks. That I love the. I mean, we recorded like 80 something in the amount of time mm -hmm. and. I was like, there's nothing that screams like visceral sex. And it's the one thing I'm missing in this album. The album's talking about the in-between space that we live in um, from breaking up to getting happy, you know? Right. Thank you was the last record I did. Really sad. But I love that one. Thank love you. that song. <laughs> and everyone loves it. But then, you and know, then you listen to what you said, too. Right. <laughs> you replay re it. And it keeps you in that space. And I kind of want to keep, you know, want it to take people away from that. Because, you know, I'm not sad anymore. I'm just really happy and I'm good. Right. But what's next? It's not. It's not happy in love and happy in love. Right. It's like, oh man, this work, this in between, this in between, work on me, this work on you, this work on life. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know? Mm -hmm. And we live there more than we live in happiness. So I wanted to do something that felt like that's what was going on right there. All right, so who wrote and produced this record? I wrote it with a, with a producer called D. Smith. He produced the record and, and they write you know, the whole thing. But mm -hmm. he produced it and I said, it sounds like sex. I'm a lot about sex. He's like, you sure? And I was like, yup. Right, and then coming from your background, because you have yeah. a church background. Oh, so yeah. I, heard, I was like, but you grow. You know? <laughs> right. I think that's, that's been the hardest thing to explain to everyone. Like, you know, it's not just, you know, it's not. I'm not unrealistic. Mm -hmm. You know, I live in the real world. I live in real life. Right. And you grow up, you have sex, you do things, you, you repent, you, you figure it out. And, you know, it's your relationship with God. It's not anyone else's. Mm -hmm. So as long as you stay on the right side of that, you know, mm -hmm. you know right. you're on the right side of that, this, you know, don't need God's person actually judge you, right. you know? So like, and I had that discourse with somebody over the internet. It was like, well, you're really sitting here judging me right now. So what, 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 right. let me let me ask you about your sins. What do you do again? And sin is sin is sin, according to Jesus, you know. Right. So like, uh, you know, we, we, you know, I've had those discussions, but mm -hmm. I have a real issue with God. I would say he's the reason I'm here. Right. Never, you know, right. the real reason I'm here, sitting right now, not lost my mind. <laughs> One of the edge because of a relationship. So mm -hmm. to me, it's just a celebration of reality. You know, right. I don't see it as anything like too crazy. Yeah. So I, yeah, it's real life. I'm 34. Am I having sex? Um, right. I'm probably a nun or, or a celibate. <laughs> and I'm not celibate. I wasn't crazy. It's like a word thank you song. <laughs> right. I'm upset. Like I'm not having sex in a while. I'm upset. You know, that would be boring on song. <laughs> All right, now with the video, the video is very sexy too. And yeah. usually I'm all like conservative, but I love how how you put everything together. It was it was sexy and classy right. all at once. So right. it is that edge, but then at the same time, it's it still normal. brings it back. This, this is difference between um, sexy and like raunchy and, 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 and just all over the place. Right. And then it's not what you do, how you do it. Exactly. Right, and you did it right. Right. Thank you. So who directed that video? It was directed by Chris Robinson. I gave him the idea. We gave him the idea. My team were like, you know. We, we're very aware of what people think and feel when they hear a record like that and what they think of me. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I love Grace Jones. Mm -hmm. I think she's awesome. She's my girl. And I've absolutely done stuff that you could put in that space before. Right. But, you know, she, there's only one Grace Jones. You know, I can't be her. Mm -hmm. This record's not going to be me clad in leather and, you know, looking like a dominatrix again. <laughs> we did that for free. Mm -hmm. So this one, this time around, wanted people to understand the entire moment, the entire feeling, the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. This was about ownership and women and men owning who they are as people versus who they're told to be or what they're supposed to be as sexual beings. Right. You know? Right. So that's why we did it that way. Chris Robbins is an amazing director. He's family. I worked with him for so long already. We've done this for so many years. So mm -hmm. I trusted him when he was like, okay, so you're going to be on the bed and you're going to like dance and move around. And I was like, Chris, I have him pulled from shorts. You have to film. Don't want to see no crack. <laughs> I was the fruit of it. How about that? You know, it was like, I got you. I was like, all right. So you know, they're like, but you and you made this song. Right. And they made me like, oh, I said, yeah, I'm in the bedroom. <laughs> you know what? But you know, like, it's, I still have a level of just, you know, I, I have 
people. I have myself. I respect myself. Mm -hmm. I just don't put it physically all out there. Right. You know? yeah. Were there any crazy moments that happened on set for this for this shoot? There was one or two couples that were just y'all need a room. Y'all need some time. <laughs> y'all need some space. No, we were really. Oh, wait, they were real couples. They weren't real couples. They oh. were like they met. Some of them met on set. Some of them knew okay. each other. Yeah. They weren't really together, but it was it was. It, but they knew each other. They had time right. to bond and hang out. Some mm -hmm. of them knew each other before, so they knew each other. Yeah. But to me, it was it was it was pretty freeing and pretty like admirable to watch people go that hard, you know. Right. They, I think they know me. They know the level and, and the caliber of director mm -hmm. we're working with. He's not gonna happen like they're looking crazy. Right. Looking like, no, it didn't at all. <laughs> it was just it was like art. It was it's, exactly. it's, it's to me it was just it was just pure art. Exactly. And then with your vocals and the music and yeah. everything was just. It was just, it was well put together. Thank you. We I'm not just saying it, <laughs> but it was. Appreciate All right, so you're about to do Essence Festival. Yeah. July 4th, are you excited? Yes. Have you done Essence Festival before? Three times. Three before. times. I'm late. <laughs> Sorry. I've done, no, listen, here's my big thing. Every time I do Essence Festival, they put Mary J. Blige on. I do two shows a night, mm -hmm. and they put Mary J. Blige on. The second show, exact same time on I'm on stage, so I get to like see her like first two records, and I go run back your way to go perform. Right. And they look at me crazy if you run on set late and you're set late. So mm -hmm. I'm always there like, I ain't met, but it was Mary. It was this. It was her. It's Mary. It's like my girl. <laughs> first was that homie. The second one was yeah. like, it's Mary. I'm still a. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah, singing. She's one of the greatest. Yeah, she's a great All time. Yeah, one of the greatest. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm still here. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I want to learn. I'm, I mean, I ain't got it all yet. Right. Still fresh. <laughs> Still out here trying to take it, you know. So yeah. Now when you when you go it's in New Orleans, yeah. so when you go there, what's one of your favorite things to get from there? Because I went oh. for a conference and I love I had the beignets. Absolutely. Beignets. You go to Cafe like? Dumont and you go to Cafe. Yes, Dumont. Cafe Dumont. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes. That's it. That's it. You go Dini's for some food. You go to Cafe Dumont and you get your beignets. You walk down the street and you feel like a fat ass because that's what you will be. And <laughs> so then you put right. a lot of hair products right. on because it's humid. You will just have to be like. <laughs> Give up, just give up. Bring a hat, okay. bring a scarf, go to my website, swarry.me, buy a scarf, get it, wrap it up, you'll be straight. Plug, plug, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now also you have um, your, your the voiceover, the cartoon character. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, how do you like that? I like it, it's fun. It's weird, it was weird at first, but I was like, Mm-hmm. Oh. They're like, you know, me jumping at this, and I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you really, you really start paying attention to the sounds you make when you do mundane things walking down the street. Like your breath sounds out because it, it helps you get better at making the sounds you need to make off the rip. And they're like, right. do this sound and, and make a heft. And you're like, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> right, right. It took me uh, about a week to like get it. But once I, you know, we're like second series in now, so. All right, so where, did you grow up growing up? Were you watching Cartoon Network? Or what was your favorite cartoon? My favorite cartoon, okay, that was on Cartoon Network when I think SpongeBob SquarePants. And then we had like, I was talking to my team and they asked me, we had like the, uh, you know, Rugrats and you Rugrats know, and, and Johnny Bravo. And, 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 and Johnny, Johnny Bravo? Bravo. All those shows, we had all of them, so mm -hmm. I'm used to and aware, you know, American humor, it's slightly cleverer. You know, as far as like just a little mm -hmm. bit more advanced than you think, right? You know, so it's kind of cool, and that's that's the thing I love about um, seeing the universe. It's not a dumb down kids cartoon. It's a small right. cartoon, yeah. right? Now, with the album, this part, the first, this first installation of the video, was it passion? Is this part passion? Yeah, I'm passion. trying to make sure, because it yeah. was like, it was two parts, I was like, wait a minute, it could be one or the other. It's four parts. No, no, it's oh, four oh, parts, okay. but it was two parts that I thought this was oh, a part yeah, of. No, this is part so, one. So, okay. Okay, and then, are you, are you allowed to say what's next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not doing it theme by theme, oh, we're just okay. doing it like whatever song makes whatever, sense to go yeah. with. But four parts, absolutely, they're all interchangeable, into, you know, intermingling. So, mm -hmm. for, for, this one even you could put make a saying courage too because it takes a lot of people to just want right. to be themselves. Right. So like all, that's why I love it. And we're in a time where everyone's just so free. And yes. I, that's why I love that you embraced it. And yeah. you also have the campaign oh, yeah. going on with Shino.com. Yeah. And yeah, I just yeah. love it. I just love everything you're doing. And we have something in common before, I, before I get done. January 18th. Say birthday? Yeah. All right, there you go. Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn power. You know, Capricorn say, power. Honey. The best. They know. <laughs> Oh, uh, anything else that I didn't go over? Like where people can find you at? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Estelle Darlings. Um, my website is www.estellardarlings.com. Go there for everything. We're launching the site on May 21st. And um, you'll have everything Estelle on there. And you can follow me on Facebook. It's forward slash Estelle. I'm right here.
Thank you. Um, that's it. Athena Bond, <laughs> DavisBond.com, Estelle. And thank you so much again for having me and sitting down for a great interview. Of you love below, living in lust like you just want to see.